So I'll share this screen with everyone. Just read the prayers to begin with. Sarva Panishado Gavo Dokta Gopala Nandana Parta Vatsa Sadir Bokta Duktam Gitam Britam Mahat. Go ahead. Oma Gyan at Marandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena. Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Shri Jai Shri Krishna Taitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Alright, so here's the verse from Gita Mahatma for today's class. Bharatam Rita Sarvasvam Vishnu Vaktra Vinishritam Gita Gito Dakampitva Punarjanmana Vidyate. By drinking the Ganges water of the Gita, the divine quintessence of the Mahabharata emanating from the holy lotus mouth of Lord Vishnu, one will never take rebirth in the material world again. In other words, by devotionally reciting the Gita, the cycle of birth and death is terminated. Archana? <laughs> เอ่อจากการที่เราเนี่ยได้ดื่มเอ่อได้ดื่มแม่น้ําศักดิ์สิทธิ์แห่งซึ่งเอ่อเป็นเหตุการณ์ที่เอ่อเป็นหนึ่
สาเหตุนั้นๆนะคะว่าทำไมออร์จินาถึงควรสู้อะไร And we we heard about how the soul is entangled in the material body. Taking birth and dying, and taking different bodies, different species of life. And then, Lord Krishna went on to explain about buddhi yoga, which is the process to get out of the entanglement. Of birth and death. And then the third chapter, we went on to hear about how a person who is in, who 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 has uh, come to the platform of knowledge. He he no longer has any duties to perform. Yeah, the third chapter describes great souls like Janaka and Lord Krishna for them. There's no duty to perform. But still, they're active because they want to show the good example to others. Then chapter 4, we covered yesterday transcendental knowledge. Lord Krishna was telling about different kinds of sacrifice or yajna. And there, Lord Krishna described different kinds of sacrifice, different kinds of yajnas you could perform. But he said that the, the, the topmost yagya is the sacrifice of knowledge. And so we described how you get that knowledge. You have to approach a spiritual teacher. So Lord Krishna also then went on to speak about knowledge and the, how knowledge can is like a fire; it can burn up all the reactions of sinful activities. And he said, knowledge is like a boat. You can cross the ocean of the material existence. And then, at the end of the chapter, Lord Krishna described knowledge as like a weapon, and you can use it to cut through the ignorance. So he encouraged Arjuna that he should fight. <laughs> so when we begin the fifth chapter, we'll see the first verse. Arjuna said, O oh Krishna, First of all, you ask me to renounce work, and then again you recommend work with devotion. Now will you kindly tell me definitely which of the two is more beneficial? Krishna, <laughs> 
างชัดเจนว่าทั้งสองสิ่งนี้สิ่งไหนจะมีประโยชน์มากกว่ากัน So if you look at the Sanskrit above that translation, you see it says Sanyasam Karmana Nam Krishna. Sanyasam Karma. In other words, Arjuna is saying, Krishna, you want me to do? You're, you're talking about renounce work. Karma Sanyas. Karma Sanyas means to stop all work. So Arjuna is confused. He said, "And one, sometimes you tell me to renounce work, and other times you tell me to work with devotion." So Arjuna, he is thinking that renunciation means to stop all kinds of work. And he's, Arjuna is thinking, if you if you do devotional service, then that is work. So he thought Arjuna is thinking that bhakti yoga and renunciation are not compatible. That they don't go together. Arjuna doesn't understand what is actual renunciation. Because if one is in full knowledge, then he won't be attached to the result of the work. So that's the same as renunciation. Yeah, if you're working with full knowledge, then you don't get reactions from the work. So Arjuna put this question to Krishna. Which is better? He says, which one do you want me to do? You want me to work? You want me to work with devotion, in other words, bhakti yoga, or do you want me to stop all work to become a karma sannyasi and not to do anything? Hmm. So we'll see how Krishna replies. It's text number two. The, the personality of Godhead replied, "The renunciation of work and work in devotion are both good for liberation, but of the two, work in devotional service is better than renunciation of work." So devotional service is definitely, we know devotional service is better than giving up work. <laughs> if one tries to give up work, 
it becomes very difficult because the nature of the soul is to be active. So, in order to renounce work, one has to one has to prepare for that. You cannot just do it immediately. You you have to prepare. You have to cultivate detachment. Right, to be a to 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 be a karma sannyasi and to stop all work it, it's not an easy thing because the nature of our mind and senses are to be active. So before one can renounce work, one has to purify himself, one has to prepare for that with many years of practice. And we see that many people who try to do it, they, they don't succeed. Like sometimes the yogi will go to the mountains and he will say, I'm renouncing everything, they go to the mountains. And after some time then they come back and then they want to open a school or they open a hospital or they do some welfare work. So it's not, that's not really liberation, doing welfare activities. But if one does devotional service, if one engages all of his senses in the service of Krishna, then that's much more secure. And one can do that very, very easily, very quickly. Hmm. We see to take up devotional service is not a very difficult thing. One can begin by chanting and taking part in kirtan. And then hearing about Krishna, hearing from the scriptures, like we're hearing Bhagavad Gita just now, this is also devotional service. But to try to renounce the world, that is not such an easy thing to do. Okay, we're going to go ahead, text number six. Merely renouncing all activities, yet not engaging in the devotional service of the Lord, cannot make one happy. But a thoughtful person engaged in devotional service can achieve the supreme without delay. หากเพียงแต่สละกิจกรรมทั้งหมดโดยไม่ปฏิบัติการตนเสียสละรับใช้แต่องค์พระควานไม่สามารถทำให้เรามีความสุขแต่ผู้ใด
แต่ผู้ที่ใคร่ครวญรอบคอบผิดปฏิบัติในการวิตกันเสียสละรับใช้สามารถบรรลุถึงองค์พระขวานโดยไม่ล่าช้า So you can see in the illustrations, in the top illustration, you can see one man is sitting there at the foot of a tree. He's got a big white beard growing and long hair, and he's just sitting there at the foot of the tree, not doing anything. So people may say, "Oh, he's very renounced. He's just living in the forest. He just stays under a tree." But there's there's no real spiritual pleasure. It's not a spiritual activity just to sit there and do nothing. He's not doing any harm, but he's not doing any good either. But if we look at the lower picture, you can see this is during the festival of Rathiyatra, and you can see the big. Jagannath deity coming, and someone is sweeping the path for the form of Jagannath to come. So sweeping the road for Krishna in the form of Jagannath, that is devotional service. <laughs> So you can see that if we if we engage our senses in the service of Krishna, it is much better than simply trying to stop the senses. So yoga is concerned with controlling the senses. So now, some people they want to stop the senses. They won't, don't want to do anything. So they get detached from matter, from the material energy. But the devotee, he uses his senses in the service of the supreme. So that is spiritual. He's engaging his senses in spiritual activities. So one is detached from matter, and the other one is attached to spiritual energy. It's easier to do service to use the senses. It's not easy to stop all the senses. You can see to stop all the senses, you have to go away from the world. You have to go into the mountains or into the forest and take up, just sit under a tree. But devotional service can be done anywhere by anyone. If you go away from the world, 
you may, you may make advancement, but it takes a long time. But if you do devotional service, like in the picture, the king is sweeping the road, that you make advancement quickly. We'll go ahead. Sloka number 10. One who performs his duty without attachment, surrendering the results unto the Supreme Lord, is unaffected by sinful reaction as a lotus leaf is untouched by water. So Krishna is giving a nice example here. He says, he said, just like the lotus flower sits on top of the water, the water is not it's not in the water, it's always on top of the water. And if any water falls on the lotus, it just runs off. So, just as the lotus is not affected by water, one who does, if one is doing his duty without attachment, giving the results to Krishna, he doesn't get any sinful reaction. Remember in the beginning, Arjuna, one of the reasons why he didn't want to fight, he was worried about sinful reactions for tight taking part in the battle and injuring and killing people. So here in this verse, Lord Krishna is describing that if Arjuna will fight, if he will do it as karma yoga, he will not get any reaction. So how to do karma yoga is described in this verse. First, first of all, you have to do your duty. It should be you, you do your duty without attachment. Arjuna's duty was to fight. He should fight and he should not worry about success or failure or victory or defeat. And he should give the results to Krishna, to the Supreme Lord. And then he won't get any reaction, even in sinful activities. The, even if it is sinful, he won't get any reaction. Arjuna won't get any reactions because he's fighting not for his benefit, but he's fighting because Krishna told him to do it. Arjuna, 
Krishna. Yeah, he's giving the results to Krishna. So there's no reaction. And this is karma yoga, nishkam karma yoga. It means yoga, the yoga of action and without attachment. So this, so this kind of yoga is coming very close to bhakti yoga. We'll go ahead. Text number 12. The steadily devoted soul attains unadulterated peace because he offers the results of all activities to me, whereas a person who is not in union with the divine, who is greedy for the fruits of his labor, becomes entangled. So two different kinds of people are described in this verse. In the, in the first half is describing the, the yogi, the, the devotee who is detached. And the second half of the verse describes the person who is very attached. So, uh, you can see, if, 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 we're, if we're attached, we're very greedy, we want to enjoy the results, but the result is we become entangled. If we become entangled in the material energy because we're trying to enjoy the material nature. We are thinking the results of the work are for our pleasure. That's a problem, it creates problems. So Lord Krishna is Lord Krishna is really glorifying the process of karma yoga, which is based on doing your duty with detachment. He wants Arjuna to do his duty without being attached to the results. So, one more verse here. Text number 22, well-known verse. Yehi sam sparsha ja boga dukha yona ya evate adi antavanta kunteya na teshu ramate buddha. An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery, which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. 
จะไม่ไปมีส่วนร่วมกับต้นเหตุแห่งความทุกข์อันเนื่องมาจากการไปสัมผัสสัมผัสกับประสาทสัมผัสวัตถุโอโอรสพนางกุญชีความสุขเช่นนี้มีจุดเริ่มต้นและมีจุดจบฉะนั้นคนฉลาดจะไม่ชื่นชมยินดีกับมัน So somebody may ask why you don't want to enjoy the result of your work you're working for you get the result you should enjoy it why you want to give it away to somebody แต่เดี๋ยวบางคนอาจจะบอกว่าเออทำไมเธอถึงไม่อยากมีความสุขกับผลของงานของเธอล่ะเธอมีเธอได้เธอทำงานน่ะเพื่อที่จะได้ผลดีมาทำไมเธอต้องให้ผลนั้นกับคนอื่นไปด้วย We have to understand the nature of the material body and the senses. เราจะต้องทำความเข้าใจกับธรรมชาติของร่างวัตถุแล้วก็ประสาทสัมผัสวัตถุเสียก่อน The pleasures of the senses are very temporary. ความสุขที่ได้จากประสาทสัมผัสที่เป็นวัตถุของเรานี้มันมันไม่ถาวร If you look at the illustrations here, you can see some of the problems which we get from our senses. Just like here, the picture on the bottom right, a fish is being caught on a hook. ที่เขาเนี่ยไปโดนอาหารเขาเรียกอะไรตกปลาแล้วปลาก็ไปติด How did the fish get caught because because of the the bait the the man fishing will put a worm on the hook and the fish thinks so there's food for me and he tries to eat and he gets caught on the hook เหมือนกับเวลาคนคนนะคะก็จะเอาอาหารปลาเนี่ยไปรอดแบบมีใส่ตัวนอนไว้อะไรอย่างนี้แล้วก็จะไปตกปลานะคะพอปลาเห็นเนี่ยปลาก็จะรู้สึกว่าเฮ้ยอันนี้มันเป็นอาหารของเรานี่นะปลาก็จะไปนะไปกินพอปลาไปกินปุ๊บปรากฏว่าปลาก็จะโดนจับ so that because of its uncontrolled tongue it got caught on the hook อันนั้นมันส่งผลมาจากว่าปลาเนี่ยไม่สามารถควบคุมลิ้นของตนได้นะคะ And then in the upper right picture, you see the deer in the forest. He's become stunned because he's listening. He's hearing the sound. Someone's playing the flute, and they're making a very sweet sound. And his ears have become captivated by the sound. อีกรูปหนึ่งนะคะก็จะเป็นรูปของกวางซึ่งกวางเนี่ยจะชอบเสียงคุยมากนะเวลากวางได้ยินเสียงคุยเนี่ยคือเขาจะหยุดนิ่งเลยแล้วก็ไม่ไปไหนเพราะแล้วเขาจะเพลิดเพลินกับเสียงของคุยเป็นอย่างมาก So because the deer is so attracted to the sound, it becomes stunned and still it makes it easy for the hunter to come and shoot the deer, kill the deer. แล้วเมื่อกวางนะคะชอบฟังเสียงอย่างนี้แล้วนะก็จะทําให้นักล่ากวางเขาจะเป่าเสียงดนตรีเสียงคุยอย่างนี้นะคะให้กวางมันหยุดนิ่งและหลังจากนั้นเขาจะยิงธนูสังหาร Usually the deers are very careful not to stay around, not to stay still, but they became stunned, they became hypnotized by the sound of the flute. แต่ว่าโดยปกติแล้วนะคะกวางเนี่ยคือเขาจะต้องวิ่งหนีเขาต้องวิ่งเขาจะวิ่งอยู่ตลอดนะแต่เวลาเขาเห็นเขาได้ยินเสียงคุยภายรอบรูปเนี่ยเขาก็จะอยู่กับที่เลยจะคือจะแข่งทีอยู่กับที่ And in this way, because he was because of his ears, he was caught by the hunter. อันนี้นะคะก็เป็นสาเหตุมาจากหูของเขานะคะประสาทสัมผัสที่เป็นหูของเขาเนี่ยทำให้เขาเนี่ยยึดติดอยู่กับเสียงนะคะ Now look at the picture over here on the top left. You can see all these insects. They're all flying into the bright light. They think they think it's a bright light. Actually, it's fire, and they're going into the fire. They're all going to be burned. เขาจะวิ่งพุ่งเข้าไปในไฟนั้นเลย
And because of their, because their eyes are attracted to the bright light, they want to go into the light, but they get burned and they lose their light. And here you can see on this picture here, you see the animals in the hole there. He got caught in the hole. They had a male, they put the male there. And then, the, no, the, they put the female there, and the male could smell the female. And the, female, the male came running to get company with the female. And the result was the male fell into the hole. When they want to catch elephants, they do like that. They bring the female elephant and then the male elephant, male elephant can smell the body of the female elephant. He's very eager to come and find the female elephant. He comes running, but they've built a big hole beside the female elephant, and the male elephant will fall in the hole. And then you can see this other side here, the, the middle picture here, the lotus flower, and there's the insect coming. He's attracted by the touch. He wants to get the touch of the flower. So these, di these different creatures, they each had one sense active. And that one sense gave them the pro it, it brought them, it got them in trouble. Right, the fish by his tongue he got caught. And the, the deer was shot by the hunter because of his ears. He became controlled by the sound. His ears were attracted to the sound. And these flies were attracted by the bright burning light. And the elephant fell in the hole because he could he was attracted by the smell of the female elephant. And so these creatures they just have one sense active. But we have all five senses active. We don't just have only the tongue, we have also ears, we have eyes, we have nose, the smell, and we also feel the touch sensation. So we have all five senses very active. But we should understand that the pleasure of these senses has a beginning and an end. 
ของบริษัทสัมภาษณ์เหล่านี้เนี่ยมันจะมีจุดเริ่มต้นแล้วมันก็จะมีจุดจบ You're not going to get a lot of pleasure in the senses. It doesn't last very long. And what happens is these senses bring us misery. They cause us misery. So, the wise man will not take pleasure in these senses. They understand material pleasure, material sense gratification will always end in distress. เพราะว่าเขาเนี่ยมีความเข้าใจเป็นอย่างดีว่าความสุขที่ได้จากประสาทสัมผัสวัตถุนี้เนี่ยมันมีจุดจบ We are looking to enjoy but that we we are trying to find the enjoyment in the body there's no pleasure there in the body เราทุกคนต่างก็ร่วมกันจะหาความสุขด้วยกันทั้งนั้นนะคะแต่ว่ามันไม่มีความสุขจากประสาทสัมผัสที่เป็นวัตถุหรือว่าจากร่างกาย So Lord Krishna says here, the wise man does not delight in the pleasure of the senses. Because we know that pleasure is very temporary. It's not going to last for long. So we have to get, we have to purify ourselves from this desire for gross sense gratification. And to get free of this desire for sense gratitude, two things are necessary. One is you should have the higher taste. You should get some pleasure. You should be experiencing pleasure in the practice of bhakti yoga. And, and, and the other thing is, we should be convinced intellectually. We should know that there is no real pleasure in the material world. And Krishna says this many places in the Bhagavad Gita. All right, we just go on to the last slide here. This is a pastime from Krishna's. Lila, five thousand years ago. Right, it's a, there's a pastime about Lord Krishna and Balaram. You can see here Krishna and Balaram, and they were with the cowherd boys. And one day they were in the forest, and somehow they were hungry. They hadn't taken any breakfast. So then they saw, you can see the picture on the bottom left, there, there were these brahmanas, they were going to do a yagya. And for the yagya, they had prepared a lot of nice food stuff to be offered. And 
ยังยังเรือพิธีบูชาไฟนั่นเองซึ่งในพิธีนั้นนะคะก็จะมีอาหารที่เขาจะใช้ใช้ถวายเนี่ยเยอะแยะมากมาย So the cowherd boys who were with Krishna and Balaram they said to Krishna we'll go and ask them to give some food because we need to, we didn't have any breakfast we're all hungry So Krishna, he said, well, he said, because Krishna knows, Krishna know, he understood these brahmanas are actually not devotees, and they're not, you know, they're not very, very nice brahmanas. They're probably not going to give. So Krishna said, when you go, you ask them in the name of Balaram, because he said, if you say my name, they, they, they're definitely not going to give, because I'm only from a family of the cowherd people. But Balaram, he's up from the family of the Kshatriya, so he has a higher social position than me. So the coward boys went, but when they went there, the brahmanas just ignored them. They didn't just pretended they didn't hear them at all. So, so then they came back and they told Krishna what happened and Krishna said, no, it's okay. He said, that's a way of begging. He said, when you go begging, sometimes you may get, sometimes you don't. Don't get worried about it. So Krishna then told the coward boys, go and ask the wives of the brahmanas. He said, they are different from the brahmanas. Go and tell the wives of the brahmanas that Krishna and Balaram are here, that I and Balaram are here, and we would we'd like to have some food. And see how they respond. So Krishna, uh, the coward boys went there, and as soon as the ladies, the cow, the wives of the brahmanas, these wives of the brahmanas, they're called the yagna patnis. The yagna patnis, when they heard that Krishna and Balaram were there. They were so pleased, and when they heard they were hungry, they picked up all of the food which they'd prepared for the yagya, and they came running to Krishna and Balaram to give everything to Krishna and Balaram. <laughs> So it's, it's a nice pastime because you can see the brahmanas, they were doing the big yagya and they were chanting all the mantras. And we said, remember that yagya represents Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna, who is non different from Lord Vishnu. So the purpose of all yagyas is to satisfy the Supreme Lord, Vishnu or Krishna. And Krishna was personally there, but still the brahmanas, they didn't recognize him and they just went on to do their ritual chant their mantras and light the fire. But the Lord was there and they didn't give him any attention. 
จุดมุ่งหมายของการทําพิธีหยักยาก็คือเพื่อให้องค์วิสนุหรือว่าคริสตานี่ทรงคุณพอพระทัยนะคะแต่พวกครั้งเหล่านี้นะคะไม่สามารถจําได้ว่าคริสตานะคะผู้ทรงเป็นพระวิสนุเนี่ยทรงมาปรากฏอยู่ที่นั่นแล้วนะพวกเขาก็ยังไม่เห็นค่าหรือพวกเขาเนี่ยไม่สามารถที่จะจําได้ So even you may be a brahmana, you may have a good birth, but if you're not devoted to the supreme Lord, if you don't have the proper knowledge and understanding to recognize the Lord and to be the mood to give service to the Lord, then your yagya is useless. <laughs> But these wives of the brahmanas, they were real devotees, and they came running. They were so eager, and they didn't even want to go home. They just wanted to stay with Krishna and Balaram. But Lord, but Lord Krishna told them, no, you should go home. It's all, good. it's all right. Your husbands will accept you. There's, you should go back to your husband. All right, so that's a nice pastime to understand the glories of the nice cowherd ladies. Here's another verse from the Padma Purana, glorifying the chanting of the holy name. Hari Eva Samaradya Sarva Devi Sureshwara Hari Nam Maham Mantra Nashyat Papa Pishachakam All the grievous sins of one who worships Lord Sri Hari, the Lord of all lords, and chants the holy name, the Maha Mantra, are removed. สำหรับบุคคลนาที่เคยกระทําบาปแล้วได้มาบูชาพระองค์เจ้าฮารีผู้ที่เป็นพระผู้เป็นเจ้าของของพระเจ้าผู้ที่เป็นพระผู้เป็นเจ้าสูงสุดเนี่ยแล้วได้มาสวดภาวนาพระนามอันศักดิ์สิทธิ์บทโดยบทมนต์ที่ชื่อว่ามหามันตรเนี่ยจะสามารถชะล้าง So the chanting of the holy name is recommended for everyone. Okay, questions and answers. Okay, นะคะก็เป็นช่วงการถามคำถามแล้วนะคะ Any questions today? มีคำถามไหมคะ Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. From uh, Durga, Durga Madhuri, or Palini, or Arvo. Yes. You want Durga? Is she going to speak? Yes, she. She told me she have a question. Is she there? You may have. Ah, Haribo. Haribo. Oh, Haribo. จะถามว่ามีมีเพื่อนฝากถามว่าถ้าเราทำบุญให้คนที่เรารักไม่ว่าจะพ่อแม่หรือใครก็แล้วแต่ค่ะคนนั้นจะได้บุญไหม Who's speaking? อันนี้เขาฟังถามมา Okay. Who's speaking? Durga. Oh, that was Durga. Really? Yes. 
Yes. Uh, so her question is, uh, some of her friends asked her that if uh, we do uh, some pious activity and we dedicate it, uh, we dedicate that to our loved one or to our parents, will they, they get that? Will they get the benefit? Yes. If we do it, well, if you have that intention that you'd like to give the benefit, they can get it, it can be done like that, yes. We have the example of Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj was offered the benediction by Lord Nishingadev. So, Prahlad was worried about his father because he knew his father had been a big demon and been fighting with, her, with Lord Nishingadev and even trying to kill Lord Nishingadev. Of course, Lord Nishingadev killed him. So, Prahlad was worried that maybe his father would go to hell for all the things he'd been doing. But, uh, Lord Nishingadev said, no, your father is not going to go to hell because you're such a great devotee. Not only your father, but your family for many generations are all going to be liberated. We also have the Shrad ceremony. After some of our, when our family members depart from the world, you know, when they die, then it's customary, people in material life, they will go and do a Shrad ceremony. One, there are different times in the year when they perform that ceremony. And that's for the benefit of departed family members. But if one is a devotee of the Lord, he doesn't have to do that. You, we just do devotional service, and by devotional service, all the family members are benefited. All right, any other question? Okay, okay. Pranams. <laughs> Om Yajna Garigula, Arinam Sankirtan Mahayajna, Rajya Timko, No Slok Mapani, Yajna Arthat Karmadu, Nyatra Vani, Yavra Kyari Yajna, Karma Yajna Vandini Amsa, Vastama Yajna Ku Paribasa de Kyo Vandini. Asali Yajna Vanego, Yajna Ku meaning Asali Paribasa Kyo to Sosotin Yogi. Yes. So, Maharaj, 
अब यज्ञ को अर्थ कर्म कर कर्म यज्ञ एरे हरिनाम संकीर्तन महायज्ञ भाई होमाली को यज्ञ भाई असली यज्ञ के परिभाषा के हो so maharaj his question is what is the actual definition of yagya because we hear about sankirtan yagya then we hear about sacrifices so uh, in, from chapter 3 he just wants to understand what exactly is the definition of yagya well you if you read chapter 4 yesterday there are many different yagyas mentioned there's the sacrifice of material possessions and there's also the sacrifice of knowledge The Vedas say yagya vai Vishnu. The purpose of yagya is to satisfy Lord Vishnu. So, Kali Yuga Dharm Hari Nam Sankirtan. Sankirtan is the actual real yagya for the Kali Yuga. But there are other yagyas. There are other uh, other processes of yagya, but they're not going to be as effective as the chanting of the holy name. Just like you can sacrifice your material possessions, you may give charity, you may give away some material wealth, you may give away property, you may donate to temple or something like that. You may give to a sadhu. That is a yagya. And for the brahmacharis, it's a yagya to sit in here and study the scriptures. That is their yagya. And for grihastas, the yagya is to control the senses. So there are many different kinds of yagya, and they're all mentioned. Many are mentioned there in the fourth chapter, but then Krishna says. Tadvidi pranipatena pariprasne nasi. Try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. That is the sacrifice of knowledge, and that is greater than sacrificing material possessions. But the most authorized process of yagya for the Kali Yuga is Hari Sankirtan Yagya, Hari Nam Sankirtan. That is the the yagya for the Kali Yuga. It is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, "Yagnae Sankirtan Prae Yajanti Hi Sumeda Saha." That people who have got a good brain, who are intelligent, they will take part in the congregational chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Of course, sankirtan should be performed for the pleasure of the supreme Lord. It's not that we have to we have to pay people to do it. Not that people have to get money to do it. It has to be done with love and devotion. 
การเกี่ยวตันยาเกียนะคะควรเป็นยาเกียที่ผู้คนเนี่ยปฏิบัติด้วยใจนะคะไม่ใช่เป็นการกระทําที่เราเนี่ยต้องจ่ายเงินหรือว่าบังคับให้ใครเนี่ยมาไม่ได้เป็นการจ้าง Thank you, Tan. Is is not a business. It's not a profession that you do it to make money. We do it simply for the pleasure of the Lord. s a n k i r t a n ha, ไม่ใช่ว่าได้รับเงินหรือว่าจ้างให้ให้ใครเนี่ยมาทำแต่ว่าให้ให้ทุกคนเนี่ยทำไปโดยมีจุดมุ่งหมายเดียวกันก็คือทำให้กริชนาเนี่ยทรงพึงพอพระทัย Prabhupada never paid people. To do service when he went to America. Ah, p r a b h u p a d ha, ไม่เคยให้เงินใครไม่เคยจ่ายเงินใครให้ทำให้ทำบทีตอนที่พระองค์ตอนที่ท่านเนี่ยไปที่อเมริกา All right. Any other question? Yes, Maharaj. I think we have four more questions. Okay. So there is a question in the chat by Sumadhuri Madhaji. So she's asking, what is the difference in the chapter three and chapter five? Because both talk about karma yoga, and in three point eight, Krishna has told Arjuna to perform his duty rather than not working. So how can we understand the difference? In in three in what in three? Three point eight, Maharaj. Three point eight. Krishna has told what? Um, so Krishna has asked Arjuna to perform the prescribed duty. For doing so, is better than not working. So, like chapter five and chapter three, how can we understand the difference? Yeah, the difference is chapter five goes into more detail, explains in more detail. The chapter three, Krishna was just uh, Arjuna was. He asked his question, and Krishna explained it. He explained first of all about karma yoga for a little while, and then he he went in to explain more about uh, for people who can't do karma yoga. He explained about karma kanda. That's the third chapter. You've got karma kanda, and then Krishna was also explaining about lust. About well, he explained. He, he was explaining about how self-realized souls they don't have any duty to perform, and he gave the examples of Janaka Maharaj, and he gave his, himself as an example that he has no duty to perform. But he said it's better that it's important to show a right example, and therefore they work. They both both Janaka and Krishna show an example because they're concerned about others. คำถามของมาตินะคะก็ถามว่าในทั้งบทที่สามและบทที่ห้าเนี่ยคริสต์นาอธิบายถึงการมาโยกะเหมือนกันเพราะฉะนั้นอะไรที่มันต่างกันนะคะคำตอบก็คือในบทที่สามเนี่ยเป็นการมาโยกะขั้นพื้นฐานค่ะซึ่งจะมีแนวโน้มในการอธิบายไปในเชิงของการมาคันดะซึ่งในบทที่ห้าเนี่ยจะเป็นการมาโยกะแบบเชิงลึกค่ะในบทที่สามเนี่ยจะเป็นช่วงที่คริสต์นาจะบอกถึงการทําการทํางานไปโดยที่พร้อมเนี่ยจะให้ตัวอย่างของตนเองด้วยนะคะแล้วของจานกัดด้วยนะคะว่าสําหรับบุคคลที่ไม่มีความการกระทํางานไปโดยไม่มีคนที่ไม่ยึดติดกับผลของงานเนี่ยสำหรับบุคคลนั้นเนี่ยไม่จําเป็นต้องปฏิบัติงานก็ยังได้นะคะแต่เขาก็จะทําเพื่อเป็นตัวอย่างให้กับผู้อื่นได้เห็น And Krishna explains the importance of setting the example. Because one of the reasons why Arjuna didn't want to fight, he was worried that there'd be unwanted children, Varna Shankara, and so Krishna says to Arjuna in the third chapter that if you don't fight, that will be the cause of Varna Shankara, because you'll set a bad example for everyone, and nobody will want to work, no, and everybody will say, "Oh, I just want to be like Arjuna. Arjuna didn't want to do his duty. I don't want to do my duty either." And everyone will become irreligious, and that's when you get Varna Shankara. แล้วก็ Krishna ก็ยังพูดถึงความสําคัญของการเป็นตัวอย่างที่ดีให้กับ
ผู้คนได้ปฏิบัติตามด้วยนะคะเพราะว่าเพราะว่าข้ออ้างในข้ออ้างของออริจินาลนะคะที่บอกว่าไม่อยากจะต่อสู้เนี่ยก็กลัวในส่วนของวารณสังขารนะคะหรือว่าการที่จะเป็นทําให้ครอบครัวเนี่ยเสื่อมเสียไปนะคะเพราะฉะนั้นถ้าเกิดว่าไม่มีไม่มีตัวอย่างที่ดีเนี่ยก็จะทําให้ผู้คนเนี่ยไม่สามารถเรียนรู้สิ่งดีๆหรือว่าปฏิบัติสิ่งดีๆได้ทำต่อไปได้ตอนหลังผู้คนอาจจะมาบอกว่าอยากไปเหมือนออริจินาจังเลยดูซีออริจินายังไม่ยังไม่ต่อสู้เลย And then Arjuna asks his question in the third chapter about why we do sinful things unwillingly and Krishna answers because of lust แล้วออริจินาก็จะถามต่อนะคะว่าแล้วทำไมผู้คนเนี่ยถึงเยอะถึงทำในกิจกรรมที่ถึงแม้ว่าตัวเองเนี่ยอาจจะไม่ได้มีความตั้งใจในทำในการทำสิ่งนั้นแต่กฤษณาก็จะตอบว่าก็สาเหตุเนื่องมาจากราคะ So the third chapter was yoga in action, karma yoga, but the fifth chapter is actually about karma sanyas. It's about you know Krishna's comparing the danger of somebody stopping work and the, the, how that how it's very dangerous thing to do to stop work. อันนั้นเนี่ยก็เป็นในส่วนของบทที่สามนะคะที่กรมกันแต่ว่าในส่วนของบทที่ห้าเนี่ยกรมโยกานี้เนี่ยก็จะอธิบายเกี่ยวกับว่าเราเนี่ยจะสละงานได้อย่างไร Especially when people stop work in the name of being spiritual, they think you know I'm renounced, I'm a sannyasi, and they stop work and they don't do anything, but at the same time they're not pure. เพราะบางคนเนี่ยอาจจะโชว์โอกาสจะตรงนี้แล้วบอกว่าฉันเนี่ยเป็นสัญญาสีฉันนําจะไม่ทํางานฉันสละทุกอย่างแต่ความจริงแล้วเนี่ยอันนั้นมันยังไม่บริสุทธิ์ and they engage in sinful activities and it creates a disturbance in the society แต่เขาก็ลงปฏิบัติกิจกรรมที่เป็นบาปแล้วก็ทําให้สังคมมีปัญหา so in the fifth chapter Lord Krishna was. He begins the fifth chapter like that, explaining about the dangers of art of premature renunciation. And he he explains also that it's easier to work in devotion than to stop work. And work in the sense of being renounced and being in knowledge. And then Krishna goes on in the fifth chapter to talk about the super soul. And how one should meditate on the super soul and serve the super soul. And then at the end of the fifth chapter, you see he introduces the sixth chapter. There's a couple of verses at the end of the fifth chapter which speak about the stanga yoga, which we're going to talk about tomorrow. And so there's quite a big difference between the third chapter and the fifth chapter if you look at the contents of the verses. The fifth chapter is more concerned. More concerned because the fourth chapter was transcendental knowledge, so the fifth chapter goes on building on that. That now you have transcendental knowledge, so now you're more able to to apply that knowledge in your work. The third chapter was more about just action without much knowledge. 
บทที่สามเนี่ยเป็นเกี่ยวกับการกระทํามากกว่าในส่วนของความรู้ But now in the fifth chapter, because chapter four was there, you got all the transcendental knowledge. So building on that, now you can act better. You know how to act. You know how to use what is the proper consciousness. Okay. What are the other questions? Aya Mataji. Pishaya ka? Yes. Hari Krishna Guru Maharaj Dada Vapana. Please accept my humble obeisances. Pi ko tham tham tham. To nương ko khong du daka ni nương ha. Pa wa nương sa wa. คุณพ่อพี่เนี่ยเสียไปตั้งแต่เด็กแต่ว่าก่อนที่พี่จะเข้ามาเป็นสาวกแต่เดี๋ยวนี้เนี่ยพี่ไม่ได้เอ่อคือว่าเมื่อก่อนทําบุญให้พี่ให้พ่อทางพุทธมาตลอดนะคะก่อนมาเป็นสาวกทีเนี้ยพอเป็นสาวกแล้วเนี่ยพี่ก็เลยเอ่อคิดว่าอันนี้อยากจะถามมหาราชหน่อยว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเราทําบุญให้กับให้กับคุณพ่อหรือว่าญาติผู้ร่วงรับไปแล้วอย่างเงี้ยค่ะโดยการที่เราอุทิศเงินเนี่ยโดนเนตเป็นผ้าปัสดำหรือว่าการสวดมนต์หรือการทำ devotional service ต่างๆเราสามารถคุณทิพย์ให้กับผู้ร่องรับตรงนี้ได้ไหมคะขอบคุณค่ะอาดิวิชนะ She have a continue question from the part of Durga Mataji that her father passed away she is not devotee but during that time she used to Do some ceremony according to Buddhism and dedicate to her father. But after she become devotee, then she also try to like do devotional activity and dedicate for her father. Like sometimes give donation for the prasadam or her herself chant extra round for him by doing so. Will her father get the benefit? Yes, yes, he will. If you're doing it as an offering for your father, then he will get the benefit. Yes, more questions? Um, Veda Priya Mataji had a question. Bhaktin Veda Priya. Hare Krishna uh, Maharaj. Hare this Krishna. is Julian or uh, Yasuda Ma Yasuda Mati Mataji has given me Veda Priya as my spiritual name. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I want to ask you, in Srimad Bhagavatam, yes, it has been said that Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam. So, as I was looking through these verses, I, and, I went, and I look into the picture where, and then when you said that Balaram, uh, Lord Balaram was from the Kshatriya background, and Krishna is a cowherd boy. And why does Krishna hide himself as a cowherd boy in Vrindavan? Why is it that in, in the performance of Yajna, uh, among the many people, they, they offer the offering to Lord Vishnu? Why does Krishna as a Supreme Personality of Godhead hide himself in a small little identity where people are not able to acknowledge his position as supreme, considering that he came as a cowherd boy. Yes, uh, this is uh, Krishna's pastime as a young boy, that he enjoyed this pastime in Vrindavan to take the part of the cowherd boy. Later on, when he grew up, he, m he went to Dwarka and he became a king. Or, a, you know, he, he became a, a great king with a big empire. But as a young boy, he's enjoying this lila of Vrindavan. 
as being a cowherd boy, that it's very sweet for him, that he can have very intimate, loving dealings with all of his devotees. And actually in the spiritual world, in the kingdom of God, the spiritual world, Lord Krishna also enjoys that life. He enjoys it in the village as a cowherd boy. It's the greatest pleasure for him. But to be in the, in the palace and to be the king and to be worshipped and to be given a lot of awe and reverence and respect, it becomes a little boring after some time. So he enjoys the intimate dealings where there's not so much awe and reverence, where there's less respect shown, but where there's more intimacy and loving dealings. So that's why Krishna enjoys the cowherd, the being in the position of a cowherd boy. He, he enjoys the, the sweetness which is there in that atmosphere, in those relationships as a cowherd boy. It's more pleasing, it gives him greater, the greatest satisfaction. You see, where, where there is more opulence, there's less sweetness. So Krishna enjoys the sweetness. You know, even sometimes great rulers uh, I remember uh, it was uh, over in the UK, the, the, the Queen of England, her, her sister Princess Margaret and her husband, you know, they were very famous because they were royal family. But sometimes they would like to disguise themselves and just go out and go into the town and just go around and just be ordinary people. They found that was more pleasing and more pleasure than being official, than being in the palace with all the dignitaries and all the royalty. Hmm? Can you understand? Uh, I can understand. I, I can understand because we are devotees and we can appreciate um, his, his position. I just don't understand um, why people believe belittle his position as a covered boy. People would say, why do you worship Krishna? He's just a, a small being compared to Lord Vishnu, Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. Yes, but they don't understand the real magnitude of Lord Krishna's position. They don't understand these cows are not ordinary cows that all of these cows are very special uh, Kamadenu cows. They can fulfill all the desires. They're or not ordinary cows. And Lord, Lord Krishna is worshipped by Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. These demigods, they offer their respect to Lord Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. That's very helpful. Okay. Yes? Is it another question or will we finish? Um, there was a last question, Maharaj, by Sri Devi Mataji. Okay. Sri Devi Gaurangi Mataji. Uh -huh. um, so she asked a question that um, do, do we as devotees, we need to do some pinda offerings for the departed souls, um, for our parents, for example? So she was asked to do so, and you know, so how long do you have to do such offerings? Well, we don't have to do it. Usually devote, as devotees, we don't usually do these things. But because you're a householder, you're a grihasta, and not everybody in your family is a devotee, so probably you do have to do it. And I don't know how many times you need to do it, but it's, that's up to you. It depends on you and depends on the family. There's a particular time every year when people will do these things. We know Lord Chaitanya, he went to Gaya and the, and the reason when he was a young man, his father had died and he went to Gaya, he wanted to do Pinda there in Gaya. 
But that was only an excuse. His actual real reason for going to Gaya was to get initiation from Ishwara Puri. But he did use that as an excuse to go to Gaya. So, uh, you want to do Pinda, you can do it. Generally, we like to offer the Vaishnava prayers, where, you know, we don't offer anything, uh, we won't offer any forbidden things, no, no alcohol, no non-vegetarian foodstuffs, no onion and garlic and so on. When you make the food offerings, should be pure, should be sattvic should be the standard of the Vaishnava culture. And ideally, get a Vaishnava devotee to do it, not just some Karmakandi Brahman. Understand? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Vila Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for the answer. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we can stop here tonight, and tomorrow night we're going to go on chapter 6, Dhyana Yoga, Yoga of Meditation. Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki, Gaur Premanande, Haribo. Haribo.